Good morning, everybody. It's Randy with Randy's RV Bible Study. Today is July 4th. Happy Independence Day, America, United States of America. And we're going to be jumping into Revelation. Again, I don't claim to be a, an end times prophet or anything like that or knowledge of any of this. I am just a teacher. Again, this is Randy's RV Bible Study. I'm going to rely heavenly on John MacArthur's commentary for notes on this. And we're going to run in six, first of all. Then we're going to backtrack. For, we're going to do a Quentin Tarantino here. We're going to start in six. The first seal. Before I do that, then the four living creatures said amen, and the 24 elders fell down and worship him who lives forever. So who is worthy to open up the scroll and the seals? Jesus Christ. I want you to know that we're going to see that Jesus Christ is in control of everything. He is God of the universe. He is the creator. He mentions that over and over again. We're going to see that he is worthy to be praised. If you're not praising him, you will. You will bow down and worship him. Whether you want to or not, all knees shall bow before this king. So now the earth has what's going on before we get into verse, I mean, chapter 6. What has happened is the earth is in disarray as the Christians have, well, they've essentially been raptured. So they're, and they're gone and the earth's in disarray. Uh, it doesn't quite know what to do and we need a leader. And we need a leader pretty fast. And this leader comes on the scene who has the answer for everything he has the answer for the world and he has it in the form of peace and he conquers with a white horse which symbolizes peace and he conquers without any bloodshed uh, he just comes in and the world submits to him and gives authority to him because well they need a leader they, need, they don't know what's going on and they may have all kinds of weird uh, ideas about it but here we go. Now I saw when the lamb, lamb opened this one of the seals, I remind you that the lamb is Jesus Christ and he is opening the seals. It's judgment. It's the, God's judgment. It's not the judgment day, but it's God's judgment raining down on the earth. It's time to uh, get to business here. It's been long enough. And so now when I saw the lamb open up one of the seals, I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, come and see and look and behold a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow and a crown was given to him, symbolizing that the earth has given him a crown. He has a bow, there's no arrows attached to it, so he's not, he's not conquering in the way of, he hasn't conquered in the way of war. And it was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. He conquers the world without bloodshed. The Lamb, as Jesus described in previous chapters, which we'll talk about in a minute, he alone is worthy to open the seals, and this is the beginning of the end. This is the beginning of the end. Judgment and tribulation. Here we go with the tribulation. The first seal, Antichrist, is able to conquer the world with his bow. And again, no arrows in a bloodless coup. As the earth hands over loyalty to this ruler who initiates peace on earth. But this is a false peace. The white horse represents an unparalleled peace as the entire world will follow this man obsessed with pursuing peace. He just, they're going to follow him. He's got some kind of charisma. And one by covenant, this piece is a one by covenant and agreement, not by war. The seven year reign of the Antichrist with a seven year covenant, his own pact with Israel that will, will actually be shorter than that. Just ask the American Indians how those pacts go. <laughs> and they might, they might say, well, white man, yeah, the treaties were broken. That's what you have here. That's that's the best I can describe it. The Indians were forced to hand over. They were forced to. 
and the treaties were given and then those treaties were broken of course they're broken because man is a liar it's not just white man it's all men all men are liars and this is what's happening here this antichrist he's antichrist <laughs> he's he's a liar and uh so the seven year reign of the antichrist will actually only be three and a half years and his own pact will be a shorter time the leader of this covenant is the little horn and the evil leader found in New Testament prophecy. Halfway through, the Antichrist will break his covenant. Three and a half years remaining in the tribulation. God's wrath intensifies. And following again, immediately after the rapture, some people argue, well, the rapture is not in the Bible. It's called capture up. If you want to look up John 14, 1 through 3, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 8, John 14, 1 through 3, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. You know, a lot of people are looking for um, the Antichrist. <laughs> uh, Christians, and I've had people on my channel tell me that Trump is, Donald Trump is Antichrist, uh, uh, a poppycock. There's not even... I don't know where, just because people follow on him, then we could say that about Obama. We thought Obama was the Antichrist. On and on and on and on goes the story. Listen, if you are a Christian, and I mean by that, a true Christian, and what do I mean by a true Christian? I mean that you're born again. You are saved. You have been saved, you have been born again. You're not just professing to be a Christian, you li you're living for Christ then you don't need to look for the Antichrist. You need to be looking for Jesus Christ. He is coming for you. And that's not the second coming, but he's coming to spare his children from what's about to take place. And what's about to take place is judgment. And this judgment is methodical, but not, it's pretty swift. Seven years doesn't take long. Three and a half years, well, we've had we've had our presidents in for four years, so three and a half years is nothing. So now we're at the three and a half year mark, and, we're, and Christians are gone. So if you're a Christian, quit worrying about the Antichrist. <laughs> quit worrying about him, because you're not going to see him if you believe in the Lord. Quit telling me it's Trump. Um, quit telling me it's one of the presidents. Quit telling me it's, I don't know, maybe it is Trump. <laughs> maybe it is Obama, you know. Uh, I don't think it's Trump. I can tell you that it's, it's not Trump. Trump's uh, <laughs> that's not the Antichrist. <laughs> so let's get into. Uh, oh, people are following him. Well, people follow all kinds of people. So they follow in Obama, uh, Biden. Uh, you know, I won't even get into politics right now. I just I can't. You know, if you're if you're <laughs> listen, if you're voting for somebody, I don't care who you vote for. Really, none of my business, but if you're voting for somebody that is representing evil and assigning sin for Americans, we get to vote, and we don't even know what that means anymore because I don't even know, personally, if my vote counted. So if, if we're assigning uh, somebody into office that represents evil in any way, an anti-God stance in any form or fashion, we have done ourselves a disservice. And you know what? The Lord is in control of it all. He's going to allow whatever the people want. That's what he did in the past. That's what he will do in the future. So if the people want ungodly, uh, an ungodly lifestyle, if that's what they are wanting, that's what they're gonna get in the measure of a king. The kings, if you read back in the Bible, you will see that there was only a couple of them that were any good and righteous at all in following God. The rest are more evil, selfish, maniacal, evil, twisted human beings after their own selfish. That's how human beings are because human beings are wroth with sin. We just are full of sin and selfishness. So back to the seals, the seal of the red horse. Now, when I saw the Lamb open up the, one of the seals, I heard one of the four living creatures say with a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I look and behold a white horse. He who sat on, sat on it had a bow 
and the crown was given him, and he went out conquering. So we went to the first seal. That's well, I was hoping I'd get to the red horse. Now we're going to the red horse. So now we have peace. Now we have the second seal. When he opened up the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come and see. Another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth. Now we had peace. Now we don't have peace. He was granted to take peace from the earth and that people should kill one another. And there was given to him a great sword. From worldwide peace to now worldwide war. And this, unfortunately, is just the beginning. People killing one another. War and violence is now erupting into assassination, revolt, massacre, and wholesale slaughter. This is a violent time on the earth. This is not a time that you want to be. And might I add, you don't have to be. You do not have to be in this tribulation. You don't want to be here. So if you're thinking, I need to be here for my family, <laughs> at some point, you need to understand you and your family need to be in heaven. And now we're going to get there. I'm going to explain that. Now the second seal is open. Now we have this. That's the second seal of the war. Now we have a third. We have a first, second, third seal is open. The third seal is scarcity on the earth. When you open up the third seal, I heard the, the third living creature say, Come and see. So I looked and behold a black horse and he who sat on it had a pair of scales on his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius. And do not harm the, harm the oil and the wine. Uh, what is that all about? Well, as, as you know, if you've ever read history, what you see in war is famine. Famine happens during war. Food scarcity. Well, the armies need to eat. They will be taking the food, just like what's happening in Israel. They're sending food and aid to people, but the people aren't getting that. The warriors are getting that. That's that's just doesn't even make sense. Well, the people need it. You know, people. That, there's always some kind of notion of war being fair. I don't know where this notion. We need to fight fairly. We don't need to kill civilians. Poppycock. That's what it's war. There's some kind of rules to war. It's just, it's, it's amazing. Who? Why should I have a, if I'm an evil ruler is what I'm saying, why would I have rules to war? I mean, if I'm evil like Hitler, I kill everybody, kill all the Jews. That's what I want done. See, there's no rules. There's no, there's no, it's war. And so when we see war, I take the food and we, our armies need the food. And, you know, there's death all over the place. There's war, there's bombs being dropped. Uh, all of life, is, at this point, if you can get a, I'm trying to give you a picture, of a horrible time on planet Earth. They went from peace, seemingly, with the treaties. Just ask the American Indians how that went. And the, the indigenous people of the United States of America to, that signed their treaties, ask them how it goes. You'll see, they'll tell you. And then they break the treaty, and now we have war. And now we have famine, and the food supplies are 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 have diminished, and there is global hunger about. There will be well, there will be rationing of food now. That's where you get this idea of scales. You will see rationing food lines, food lines. There would be people came in Joseph day. They came all over when there was a famine. And I don't know if that was due to war or they really didn't say whether that famine just came because the earth was uh, in not producing and maybe they had a hot summer and everybody thought it was global warming, but it was just a hot summer and everything dried up. In Joseph's day, it happened. And they all came from all over the place. They all came to get food from Egypt. And so there will be a rationing and that is a way also to control people there will be food lines. See, you think it's great. And I have this idea of how people think it's just great and dandy and how much control we have and how much it's just a prideful, prideful stance. We, As soon as this happens, you're in line getting your uh, quart of wheat, which is approximately what is necessary to sustain one person for one day. Here's your denarius for one day's normal 
wage. Here's your here's your uh, uh, three quarts of barley for your animals, and do not harm the oil and wine. Well, you need oil and wine to cook with, and to, and back then they used wine to disinfect water. They didn't use it to drink up uh, and get drunk. That's not really what the wine was designed for. We had they had tainted water, so they used water uh, wine to disinfect. The wine was a strong disinfectant. So now we have we see these. Ter this terrible situation, world war, violent, violent situation, food lines, rationing, you just have enough food for yourself and boy, it's every man, woman, child for himself at this point. And then we're going to get to the pale horse and I'm going to stop there. Four seal, widespread death on ours. When he opened up the four seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying come and see so I looked and behold a pale horse and the name on him who sat was death and Hades followed him and power was given over them over a fourth of the earth to kill with a sword with hunger with death and by the beast of the even the beast of the earth were killing men this 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 is now just a horrible scene as we see here it's horrible the worst of all situations here and it's not over. It's not over yet. Death and Hades and the power was given a fourth of fourth of the earth to kill with the sword. A fourth, one quarter of the people on earth will be dead by the, the sword. And then with hunger and with death and by the beast. And well, with hunger too and by sword. One quarter of the people. I don't know how many billions of people there are. I should have done the number just to get that number. But you can do the number. So... The Greek word from which the English word we get the pale, the pale rider, this is where we get the word chlorophyll. Well, it describes as pale, ashen green, paler characteristics of decomposing bodies. God grants this horseman authority to bring death to 25% of the world's population. Who does? God grants it. What kind of God are we serving? My friends, my friends, my friends. It has gone on long enough. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm begging you to do so in light of what we just read. Jesus Christ is coming back to snatch up, to, to capture away his bride, his church. Those who are true believers, those who are overcomers, those who are born-again Christians. Or Randy, what's a born-again Christian? That's someone who has repented and turned their lives over to Jesus Christ and no longer serves their own, but takes up his cross and lives for the Lord. That's who a born again, asking for forgiveness, has the forgiveness, no different than you, anybody else, except for they're forgiven. Not superior or better than anybody else. The fact is that they've given their lives to Jesus Christ because they too, and me included in this, deserve death and hell. But because of the grace of God, the grace of the, our Lord, we can be saved from all of this. But there has to be a judgment, and God has instituted how that's going to be panned out. And he, by goodness, he's God anyways. I'm going to go backwards, like I said. I'm going to go to four. After these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking to me, saying, Come here, and I will show you these things which m must take place after this. Immediately I was in the Spirit. It wasn't, it wasn't a dream, and it wasn't a vision. He was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven, and the one who sat on the throne. And he and sat on the throne was like, like a jasper, and a sardust stone in appearance, and there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. Around the throne were 24 thrones. And on the throne I saw twenty-four elders sitting, clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their head. And from the throne proceeded lightnings, thundering, and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne there was a sea of glass like crystal in the midst of the throne, and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes in front and in back. I don't know what, what John is seeing, but he's seeing heaven. God's throne and this is what he's recording I mean I it's beyond my imagination but quite frankly so is all of this even life itself 
is beyond. I'm just used to it. You and I are just used to living and breathing on a planet and walking around as it spins around. We're just used to that. We're so used to it, it just became normal. This is what's normal in heaven. I think that's the best way I can describe it. When you look up tonight, you see the stars and you go, wow, and the moon and the planets and the celestial. It should still make you wow, but I think because we've lived, you know, me, 58 years, it's just blasé. It's just normal. This is normal. It's what it looks like here. This is what it looks like in God's throne room as John is there explaining it. A sea of glass like crystal. Creatures full of eyes in the front and the back of their head. The first living creature was like a lion. The second living creature like a calf. The third living creature had a face like a man. And the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. And they do not rest day or night. And this is what they do. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty who was and is to come. God is omnipotent. He is holy. He, he is He is the unceasing praise there. It's heavenly praise over God's holiness. He is God eternal. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him and sits on the throne and lives forever, the 24 elders fall down before him and sits on the throne and worship him and lives forever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and praise and power for you created all things by your will and they exist and were created. Folks, he deserves our praise. I watched a man say uh, on a young man's, can't remember his name, but he does street preaching and he's at a gay pride week and somebody is just cussing him out, telling him that this God doesn't deserve my worship. He does deserve worship. He does deserve our glory, honor. He does deserve our praise. He deserves it all. You don't and we don't and I don't. Glory to God. God deserves all the honor and thanksgiving. He deserves our humility. He deserves our worship. He deserves our crowns, whatever he's given us. He deserves our glory. He, he, he is the creator. And the lamb takes the scrolls. The, and then he sat at the right hand and sat at the throne scroll written on the back seal with seven seals. And then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open up the scroll and loose its seals? Who is worthy? You aren't. I'm not. The angels are not. There's nobody worthy but one. Jesus Christ is worthy and he holds all the things in his hand and the secret things and the truth is in his hand. The seal is his seal and no one in heaven or earth or under the earth was over, under the earth was able to open the scroll or look at it. Nobody under the earth, nobody could even look at the secret things of the Lord. So I wept because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed. Open the scroll and loosen its seven seals. Folks, this is revelation. This book is called Revelation. Jesus Christ is revealing to you and to me who he is. From the churches to now to all on through, it was the revelation of Jesus Christ. And look, behold, in the midst of the throne and the four living creatures, in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain. Having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Then he came to me and took the scroll out of the right hand and him and said, I don't know, worthy is the lamb. Christ is to be worshiped. Now then, when he took the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 hours fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and a golden bowl full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. All those prayers you've been given are in these bowls. Can you imagine this, this picture? And then they sing a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll. I don't know what the melody is. And you to open its seals, for you are slain. And you have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests our God and we shall reign on the earth blessed be the name of the Lord holy is the Lord glory to you glory Lord God I mean I don't know I'm just 
that's out of your heart. Sing to him. Praise him. The saints have exalted him. I'm just reading notes here on the back, on the side of my reference Bible. Heavenly joy, a new song, singing, saints are singing. Christ is worshiped. Universal worship of the throne of God, God's throne. Angels worship, heavenly host, heavenly praise. There is divine worship of the Lamb of God. Christ's death is exalted. Christ is exalted. Christ's death is remembered. Then I look and I heard in verse 11, the voice of many angels around the throne. And they were singing. They were singing. A number of them was 10,000, a thousand, a thousands saying in a loud voice. Now they're saying, worthy is the Lamb who is slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Is there too much to say about our Lord? There's not enough to say about the Lord Jesus and every creature that is in heaven and earth and under the earth, under the earth and as are in the sea and in them. And I heard them saying, every creature is going to bow down before this king. Blessed honor and glory and power to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb forever and ever and then the four living creatures said amen after all that we are going to say amen and the 24 elders fell down and worship who lives forever and ever you're looking for the antichrist you're spending your time looking for the antichrist my friend this is Jesus Christ, the ruler of all creation, the one who lives forever, who has given us life and creation and this earth and every celestial thing around it and all everything that you can ever imagine in life is given by the Lord. That's who we're looking for. Look up. Your redemption draws nigh. You are looking for Jesus Christ. If you don't know Jesus Christ right now, and that Jesus Christ comes back to pick up his church and his people, you'll have to go through the things that I described in the first part. You will have to go through the tribulation, and you will have to be martyred for your faith. That's what will be at stake. You will have, because now there will be a system in order to buy, sell. You won't be able to buy, sell, or trade without the worldly system of the Antichrist, which will be a mark on your head, a mark somehow, because there'll be ration, there'll be lines, there'll be food scarcity, there'll be war, there'll be death, there'll be violence, and he will be setting up his Antichrist kingdom for you, and he will tell you, you must bow down and worship me, or just like all the other rulers, you must bow down and worship me, or you must be killed. Rulers throughout the century, from Pharaoh on down to the Antichrist, every ruler is the same way. Every ruler of the world is the same way. Worship me or die. Jesus Christ gives you an opportunity right now to worship him freely out of your, out of love because he loved you. Will he judge you? Yes, he will if you do not accept him. That's only judgment is expected. Judgment is fair and just. It is justice here. We deserve to die for breaking the king's laws and his, his moral law. We deserve death, hell, and the grave. But Jesus Christ is full of mercy. He's full of grace. And he will give it to you with this. Repent. Repent now. But while you can, repent. Submit to this ruler, this leader who is Jesus Christ, who deserves it. And ask him for forgiveness. Believe on his name and trust him for forgiveness. Turn away from your sin. Walk to the Lord now. Turn away. You must repent or else unless the, uh, you too shall perish. Jesus warns us that. You must be born again. You have to have the Spirit of God. You have to have his seal. You have to be of his. You have to be his and belong to him to enter in the kingdom of God. To see the kingdom of God. If you want that today, it can be yours. It's free. That part is free. Jesus paid for you and me the death on a cross. Beg him for mercy today while there's still time. My name's Randy. This is Randy's RV Bible Study. I love you. I always say, but more importantly, more importantly, on this independent, you want to be free? Any man who is in Christ is free. On this Independence Day, if you want independence and freedom, he came to set the captive free from sin. He came 
to save us from sin and death, hell and the grave. He loves you. He loves you to death. God bless you. Take care.